Welcome to this demonstration of the core features of the Synthesis Explorer online tutorial system, which has been designed to teach organic chemistry in ways never before realized. This is an online system accessible through the internet with all of the standard advantages you would expect, including 24-hour availability, immediate feedback on practice problems, and automated grading and score reports. The far more unique and powerful features of the system derive from an underlying intelligent system for organic chemistry. What this means for you is that the system can dynamically generate a virtually unlimited number of problems on demand, has advanced support for curved arrow mechanism diagrams, and the potential for inquiry-based learning. This is the primary setup screen for the system, which is accessible by any standard web browser with no special plugins to install. Most of the functions of the site revolve around multi-step synthesis problems, so let's go ahead and set up one under the Synthesis Explorer section. To prepare a problem, we just need to fill in this setup form, including a user ID if we want the system to keep track of our records, or you're also free to leave a blank if you'd rather work anonymously. For this example, let's try a problem based on the electrophilic aromatic substitution chapter, with no more than two steps in the problem. It's important to note here that when we click on Generate Problem, the system does not just select a problem from a pre-authored list. Instead, what it will do is to dynamically generate a new problem that conceivably never existed before, customized exactly to the specifications we just requested. Here we have the primary synthesis problem interface for the system. What we are presented with is a target product that we, as students, are supposed to try and make somehow. And what we have available to us is a list of possible starting material reactants, as well as a list of reagents, the kinds of things that, presumably, we've been learning about in class or from the textbook. Our job, then, is to piece together the correct combination and sequence of reactants and reagents to reproduce this target product. In this example, coming from the aromatic substitution chapter, the key starting material is almost certainly going to be benzene. And I see that we need to get a bromine on the aromatic ring, so let's go ahead and try a Lewis acid catalyzed bromination. Now it's very important to note that as I click on this apply reaction to generate products button, that this is not a pre-coded example. Just right now, two seconds ago, the system looked at this reactant and this reagent and it made a prediction that this is the major product of that reaction, which we can carry on for further reaction. To finish off this synthesis, we just need to add an acetyl group by a friedel crafts acylation. We let the system predict the major products of that reaction and actually find that they do not match the target product we intended. The relative position of the bromine and acetyl groups differ because the system correctly recognizes reactivity rules, such as how the bromine is an orthopara directing substituent. The important point is that the system did not just block us and say wrong, start over. This is a legitimate reaction. It just doesn't happen to lead to the products that we wanted. But still, being able to see the results of the reaction is very informative to us as students. Seeing the mistake gives us a chance to rethink our strategy and realize, ah, we should have done the synthesis in a different order to put the meta-directing acyl group on first to ultimately produce the product we intended. What's really special about this system, however, is not just that we can work through multi-step synthesis problems, but that it allows us to do some free-form exploration and inquiry-based learning by virtual experiment in a chemical sandbox. So what do I mean by that? Well, consider another simple problem from the alkenes chapter showing this product that I'm supposed to try and make. What's special is that the system does not constrain us to this purpose. We have the freedom to just browse through and experiment with the available reagents on our own. For example, I wonder what this HBr reagent does. That's okay because the reagents include links out to examples and virtual textbook pages so that we can read more about it if you find that helpful. What I think is really much more helpful than just reading about a reaction is to be able to actually just try it out for yourself. I wonder what would happen if I treated this alkene with HBr. Now that is a question that the system can answer for us by predicting the major products of the reaction. Let's try another example to reinforce our understanding. I wonder what would happen if we treated this alkene with HBr. Again, the system can predict the major products of the reaction. In this case, it's two enantiomers representing a racemic mixture. The point is, after seeing these and maybe a few more examples, we can sort of figure out a pattern. I can say, ah, I get it. Whenever you see a double bond, the HBr will add to it, and the bromine will end up on the inside end of the bond. In that case, if we want to actually make this product, all we have to do is use this starting material and treat that with HBr. Now, having learned by analogy, we know how to solve this problem, which I'll go ahead and complete. Huh. Well, that's strange. 
I was expecting to get this target product out of that reaction, but instead the system predicted this as the major product. Well, when strange things like this happen, the system can also provide a relevant warning or hint message, such as in this case it's reminding us, don't forget, carbocation intermediates may rearrange. And if those words have no meaning to you, that's okay, because for pretty much all reactions predicted by the system, we can drill down on this mechanism link. I'm going to skip to the solution part for now, and what this shows us here is not only the overall reaction predicted by the system, but also a complete curved arrow mechanism diagram to show not only what the product of the reaction was, but to also explain how the reaction proceeded, including this step here, a hydride shift, carbocation rearrangement, it's the reason we got that unexpected product. But you know what would be even better than just showing someone what the mechanism is? It's to have them interactively work through an example themselves, which we can do with this Mechanism Explorer interface. Again, here's the overall reaction predicted by the system, but this time the system wants you, as a student, to complete the mechanism diagram, which we can do with this Sketcher interface. So let's see, I think the first step of this mechanism is the electrons from this double bond getting protonated by the HBr. So I'll go ahead and submit that for analysis. Here's the drawing I just submitted, and actually it's wrong. But again, note that just like with the synthesis problems, the system did not just say wrong, start over. It gives me much more specific and useful feedback than that in the form of an actual chemical structure. It says that if I drew these arrows, and the electrons actually did follow them, that would entail an intermediate product which looks like this. And hopefully I can look at this and realize, wait a second, we've got a hydrogen with a negative charge on it, two things bonded to it, clearly that's a mistake. But that's information we can use when we go back to the drawing board to try and figure out what I did wrong. Here's the drawing I submitted first, and now I can look at that and realize, whoops, I forgot, the electrons from this HBr bond need to go away. Resubmit that. Here's a drawing I just resubmitted, and this time it is correct, it matches what the system expected, and the predicted intermediate products look good. And you may note what I consider to be a convenient feature is that at no time do we ever have to deal with the tedious task of structure drawing. Since the system always has the next step just set up and waiting for us, we can focus strictly on the actual problem solving of the mechanism, which is all about where do we draw these arrows. Let's go through one final example to really drive home this idea of free-form exploration. If we go back to the synthesis interface, not only can we select any reactant from the available list, if we click on this pencil icon, now we can even sketch in our own. I mean, look at this, I'm just making this up. Here's a molecule the system has never seen before, and yet still, we can ask the question, I wonder what would happen if we treated this molecule with HBr? And to a very large degree of generality, the system can still give us a reasonable prediction, even when something strange happens, such as in this case, hey, why did the bromine end up on the far end of the double bond? Well, it's giving us the explanation just below. It's because of conjugate addition by a soft nucleophile with subsequent enol tautomerization. And again, if those words have no meaning to you, that's okay, because we can always drill down to the mechanism. But remember, this was a novel reactant that I just drew a second ago, and yet still, the system is able to produce a complete curved arrow mechanism diagram to explain the course of this reaction. I presently have essentially all of what you would call undergraduate organic chemistry implemented in the system, and some even beyond. It's worth noting that the content of the system is not intimately tied to any particular textbook. The subject categories are all designed to be modular, such that they can be used in any order or combination to match virtually any textbook or lesson plan. We analyzed results from classes at the University of California, Irvine, where the system was made available, and have found evidence that, indeed, students who actually use the system over the course of a class score, on average, 10% better than those who do not. If you are a student or instructor interested in using the system, just direct your web browser to synthesisexplorer.com. And from there, you can check out the help and walkthrough pages for detailed information on getting started. And if you'd like any further information or are interested in collaborations, we invite you to contact us.